Hey YouTube, welcome to my channel and in this series of videos I'm going to take you through the steps that I went through to build my Ferrari F430 replica. Stay tuned. Back on the bodywork and this time we're going to work on what's known as the roll bar surround. So this is the piece that sits just behind the headrest of the driver and the passenger and I previously cut these holes out which was in a previous video and we're going to insert what is fake roll bars into these holes to give it that Ferrari 430 look. The kit comes with a roll bar surround mounting frame which is bolted to the back of the MR2 and then the roll bar surround itself is then screwed into this as can be seen here. This is looking from the back of the car towards the front. Once I was happy with the mounting of the roll bar surround I had to take it off again because we need to do another cutout and that's this one marked here. And this one is so that we have access to the original MR2 roof release catch. This hole is then cut out and then sanded down to make it look neater than it does here. When I test fitted the original roof release catch I found that it was very tight to get your hand in that hole and pull the catch to release the roof. So what I've done here as you can see with the silver brackets I've just extended the catch out a little bit that makes it much easier to get your hands onto the catch to release it. So here we see the supplied roll bar. These are by no means a roll bar. They are basically made of plastic and all they're there for is to get covered in leather and make it look like an original Ferrari 430. As you can see they're mounted through the two holes that were previously cut out in the surround and are mounted onto the metal support plate underneath. And here we can see both roll hoops test fitted. Next, took a look at uh, fitting the Z flap. So these are little pieces here that are shaped when you look from the end like a Z, and they just fill in a small gap that's left between the pod above when you have the roof down. When you have the roof up, obviously the roof comes through this little piece, so it's not needed. So you need something that you can move in and out and move out the way when you want to put the roof up and put back in place when the roof's down. To make this work, firstly we need to make a bracket that looks like this. We then mount that bracket onto a standard cabin hinge, like so. We will then need to cut out a little piece of the roll bar surround right at the end as shown here. So the pencil marks is the area that I'm going to cut out. Which looks like this when cut. We can then drill some holes and mount the cabin hinge like so. We can then bond the Z flap onto the plate and making sure it's aligned by using a clamp while the bond dries. Time to test fit the wheels and to do that you're going to need to get the spacers on. So this is a two part spacer, I think I mentioned this earlier. So the first part, the inner part, mounts on to the hub and then the outer part mounts onto the inner part allowing you to fit the wheels onto the car using the studs that are shown here. This is a rear wheel spacer. And this one's a front wheel spacer which isn't as big as the rear wheel. I don't have the measurements for these so sorry guys and yes the calipers are a mess but don't worry I will clean those and paint those before we uh, get this car sorted. Time to mount the front bumper for the first time. 
The actual supplied front clip does have a couple of threads hanging through the bottom as can be seen by these arrows. So what you need to do is cut out some holes in the front bumper which are indented so they are kind of marked. Here you can see the holes have now been drilled. I also noticed that I would need to cut out a couple of slots like so to get round the headlight bracket. And then the front bumper could be fitted and wow it just changes the whole shape of the car when this is fitted it looks amazing. The supplied rear end of the kit has a big cutout in this area where you can see the white board. This is for the heat of the exhaust to come through and so you don't really want fiberglass in that place there. So what I did I got hold of some this dye bond board and cut out a shape to cover that area so that it's covered off and you can't see the exhaust. What I wanted with my build was that the fake engine would lift up when you lift up the rear deck. So to do that what you need to do is attach a couple of hinges to the back of the fake engine and mount it to that die bomb board that I just installed. So here I've drilled up three holes after marking where the hinges want to go. I then bolted two plastic hinges so that they don't rust and leave stains in the back onto the fake engine. And then mounted the other side of the hinges to the board that I just fitted at the back of the car. Using a couple of straps I can then connect the front of the fake engine to the bottom of the rear deck so that when you lift that up it'll lift up the fake engine as well. So before I send the car away to be painted I thought I would test fit the supplied door cards. These need the armrest to be fitted to the door card and also you need to cut out and install the original MR2 door handle so you can open and close the doors from inside the car. I have also cut out and installed the main speaker and the tweeter into the door cards because I'm having a decent sound system in my car as well. The door pocket also needs to be installed on the lower part of the door card. Don't worry about this looking rough at the moment, this is all going to go to the trimmers and all be leather trimmed. So now it's nearly time to take the car to the body shop. So I looked at some prices to have the actual car lifted and delivered to the body shop and returned and it was a lot of money. So I thought well I might as well just buy myself a cheap trailer and I can just sell it afterwards and probably not lose any money on it at all. So here is the trailer that I bought which had to be quite a wide trailer to take what is going to be a Ferrari sized car. Now when I tried to load the car onto the trailer, the back wheels were too wide and they were catching this lip here. So I just cut it off with an angle grinder. So my trailer is now ready for the car to be put on. So let's take one last look at her before she goes off to the body shop. Load her up. And away she goes. Next time I see her, she'll be painted.
And there you go. Hope you enjoyed that. And if you did, then please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and stay tuned for more videos like this. Until the next time, take care.